It's White Hart Lane later, Spurs and Manchester United, but first of all, the Riverside, Janino Barra against Aston Villa. Let's get the team news from our match commentators this evening, Phil Thompson and Rob Hawthorne. And Happy New Year from the newest stadium in the Premiership, although it hasn't been the greatest of turns of year for Middlesbrough with four defeats in their last five games and disrepute charges levelled against Brian Robson and two of his players. He's also had one or two injury problems and Middlesbrough are still depleted tonight. Jan Fjortoft's groin problem keeps him out. Nick Barmby still some way from fitness. His Achilles injury likely to prevent him from playing even in the FA Cup this weekend. White, Morris, Musto and Brian Robson himself are all unfit, but Phil Stamp has recovered. He and Jaime Marino for Alan Moore and Clayton Blackmore are the changes from Saturday's defeat at Nottingham Forest, Phil. Well, that's quite an interesting um, team selection. I think the lads at the back, Pearson and Vickers, are going to have to really be on the toes because Milosevic is playing so well, and plus uh, York up front. It's going to be very interesting, but the other one that I think is going to be the likes of Southgate. He's going to have to make sure that people pick up the likes of Zionino. He's going to be playing in that position. As Andy's just stressed, it's very, very difficult. The likes of uh, Barnby plays in that position, McManaman, and they sit in that hole. It's, uh, it's really an attacking formation again, but when you look at their team, the main strikers that Middlesbrough have had are not playing today. So it's difficult to see where goals are coming from. So they'll be having to rely probably on Henry up front. Well, Aston Villa have had an inactive Christmas with the postponements of their home games against Liverpool and Sheffield Wednesday, but the extra time to recover hasn't been enough for Paul McGrath and Ian Taylor to overcome their injuries. So Ricardo Schimacher starts a Premiership game for only the second time, and Dwight York makes a well-timed return after surgery on his broken nose. On the bench is Irish youngster Gareth Farrelly, and involved on a rare occasion this season, Franz Carr. Just looking at their team again, very similar to Middlesbrough's formation. A lot of teams now looking for that player just off the front two, trying to create space, and they have got goals, whereas Middlesbrough haven't. Milosevic, York and Johnson all given goals, and if you're thinking of a pop from midfield, there's always Draper in there. But again, uh, Gareth Southgate, playing sweeper, I think is a marvellous choice from Brian Little. The lad can organise, he can make sure the likes of Behiog and Shemaker, you'll have to help him tonight. But he's really impressed me this season, and I think that is a position made for him, because he does boss people, he organises people, so it should be a really interesting game. We talk about youth policies in football teams, what about the youth policy of Middlesbrough's crowd? I wonder how much that little baby will remember about New Year's Day 1996. Villa fans come here as part of the 11th Premiership side to visit the Riverside Stadium since it opened this season. They've regularly drawn crowds in the region of 29,500 here, particularly since the arrival of Janino to further boost the momentum that Middlesbrough were already building up with the arrival of Brian Robson and his entourage. Certainly festival times here on Teesside. 1995 actually didn't get off to the best of starts for them and yet despite picking up one point from their first nine in the league, Middlesbrough went on to achieve promotion to get into the Premiership with the big boys, and they certainly haven't disgraced themselves. The victory for either Middlesbrough or Villa will take them up to fourth place in the Premiership tonight. Everybody else is looking for the teams, so why shouldn't the Middlesbrough mascot be among them? Milder weather actually on uh, Teesside. They don't have undersoil heating here at the Riverside Stadium. So with the big freeze, there may have been one or two fears that the state-of-the-art plastic protection might not have done its job. But the thaw has helped. The snow that had affected these parts has relented. And while everyone has wrapped up warm to protect against the elements, the pitch fill is actually looking in quite good condition. Pitch is marvellous, you know, you're talking about the snow and everything, but as you know, driving up, the fog I thought was going to be a, a bigger problem than the, than the snow, but the pitch is in perfect condition, it's great, it's very, very big, 
and this is my first uh, appearance up here at the Riverside and it's a magnificent stadium. It's been said once before but you've got to come up here to realise it. And into the stadium come the two sets of players. The fog that's lingered in nearby parts has thankfully stayed clear of this stadium. It may be a little chilly, but we're expecting a good contest between Middlesbrough and Aston Villa. It's Aston Villa with Phil Thompson and Rob Hawthorne. And our match referee tonight is Martin Bodnam. And it's his first time officiating at the Riverside Stadium. And having come all the way from Cornwall, no surprise that he's let the train take the strain. Middlesbrough kicking us off. Of course, in the red. Craig Little getting an early touch against the club that released him as a youngster. Here's Jamie Pope. He's looking for the first free kick of the match. Referee not impressed enough to award that, but he has given Middlesbrough the first corner in the opening half minutes. Andrew takes up his position. He goes straight back out to Janino. He swung it in awkwardly towards that near post. Southgate having to guard against it. Henry. Fleming and Milosevic not allowed to take the free kick as quickly as he wanted. The first visit to the stadium for most of the Villa players too. Schimmaker looking for Dwight York. And the clearance to Cox his old club and not getting much charity from Tommy Johnson he'll be looking for a good result today Neil Cox remember seeing him good competitor gets himself into trouble gets a little bit hot-headed at times but still a very good player Nino's ball dropping too short for Hendry for retrieving it well though. Little and Vickers. To Captain Pearson. Nino taking advantage of this free roll he's given. Floating from one side of the pitch to the other. You certainly don't look as though the man-to-man -man mark in uh, Zuninho. Still getting free, but they must have great belief in their own ability, Berlin, and that they can take care of him and whoever's nearest to him. Oh, and they could be in trouble. It was uh, Schimmaker who just gave Jaime Marino the merest sight of a possible cross. He's apparently a very, very good player, is Schimmaker. And I don't think the loss of McGrath will hold for his experience. Fisher and Boyd have got great hopes for him. But it was a dreadful mistake there in his own box. Schimmaker, a player who's already been capped at England under 21 level. Although this is only his second start in the Premiership for Aston Villa. Cox. Moreno. Here he's looking to impress on a rare chance in the starting lineup. Just possessed by Andy Townsend. Southgate causing himself only two problems. And a foul by Gareth Southgate. And we let it go as White clears. And York now bears down on Nigel Pearson. The back pass was an awkward one, and it was dealt with well by the goalkeeper, Walsh. He's done well, Walsh, because the ball's bouncing in there. 
I suppose every goalkeeper wants the ball to his favourite foot on the floor until he's done well there. He's had to take it on his chest, good control. He cleared it well. I think looking at the other end of the, the pitch there, I think it's got to be a free kick. Didn't look as though he had control of the ball. He's got to give a free kick there, right in the edge of the box. But I didn't really have control of it. Okay, the offender in that situation was trying to release Johnson there, but uh, flag up. Here's Henry. And a foul by Draper this time on Janino. Not had the easiest introduction to English football, Janino. Henry tricking his way past Ehiog. And another England number 21 defender, Ehiog, stood his ground. Another player I'm greatly impressed by. I love seeing me defenders being involved right in the penalty area. And this boy's got a big future. Tremendous prospect. That's Janinho with a corner. And a comfortable take by Mark Bosnich, who is a former teammate of his opposite number Gary Walsh they were at Manchester United together both surviving the early scares Moreno Pearson Neil Cox letting it go tamely see from the perimeter of the pitch the sort of levels of snow that they've had on Teesside and how grateful they are for the protection that they've had over the pitch Fleming <laughs> setting Janinho away and he ran into Draper he clears to Alan Wright and for the one player smaller than Janinho in the Premiership Charles York Draper Milosevic had peeled away Southgate did well Right Comes in looking for York and picking up Charles instead very committed. Dwight York. Shinnick has run. It's a positive one. Draper looking to return it to him. Wasn't really best served by the return, Schimmaker, after a very good run. It was tremendous. Seen the opening, went forward wasn't rushed about it at all and as the ball's coming there I think Draper's been caught on the ways and gives him a poor ball back it was tremendous run by the central defender Showing great confidence for one so young and relatively inexperienced Schumacher a player who made his debut on the opening day of the season against Manchester United but most of his appearances for Villa's as a substitute now given his chance because of McGrath's knee injury and certainly Gareth Southgate seems to be enjoying the extra responsibility of the central role what makes it just right for him he is more a defensive midfield player so now being able to go in at the back you talk about players what qualities they have he's, he can dig in in that position Johnson's cross it was an awkward one and it was uh, claimed by Gary Walsh, who will have been aware that Milosevic was coming in behind him. Just saying of it. I think it was a real tester for Walsh, this. Just took it really well. Charles looking for York. Johnson. Looping header, but not as taxing a time for Walsh as the earlier cross from Johnson had given him. 
And like Tommy Johnson, Brian Little's a native northeasterner. And although the surroundings of the Riverside Stadium will be unfamiliar to him, he had a long spell with Middlesbrough when they were at Ayrson Park on their coaching staff. Shimaka. Here's Neil Cox. He gets the throw in off Andy Townsend. Middlesbrough have been very durable in their performances at home. 23 of the 33 points they've gained this season have come here. And Tottenham are the only visiting side to win a league match. Janino looking for Hendry. Stamp has taken up a position in the middle. Moreno's waiting there as well. This is Fleming. Hendry. Hendry got himself into a position to provide the cross, but it goes behind Bosnich's goal. That was a very promising move. Very promising move by Middlesbrough. They'll be disappointed. Henry will be. He's given the ball to Stamp. He's, when he gives the return, it doesn't look as though he's, in, he's wanted the ball back. Maybe Fleming should have crossed the ball. He's had opportunity then, and now it's gone. Now it's gone. He's gone to, on to his weak foot. Fleming. The run has been made by Jamie Pollock. That threat neutralised rapidly by Gareth Southgate. Reads the game so well, Southgate. Just going on, to, talking about him before. There again. Got a wonderful attitude to the game. Reads it so well. As a midfield player, he was marvellous, but I think at the back, that position is made for him. And then also he can step into midfield when it becomes necessary. Moreno. Not too many choices for him in the penalty area. Henry was waiting as the sole Middlesbrough player. Janino away from Andy Townsend. Three waiting in the box this time. That could be the problem for Middlesbrough. They've got Hendry up front, but Moreno seems to quite similar to um, Janino, but he keeps going, dropping back into midfield, leaving Hendry up front on his own. And it becomes very, I don't know, it's not very adventurous, but Moreno seems to have great ability, great touch, and he's maybe going to be a provider. Coming away and losing out, and Southgate's Again, has to be the man there. Moreno, a player who hasn't had too many opportunities in the Middlesbrough first team. In a way, Rob, when you think of it, all the injuries at Middlesbrough, it does give them all a chance, all these players who come into the side, to show what they can do. Wonderful opportunity for someone, especially the young lad. Rob was talking before the game how good he, he rates... Uh, the stamp, Phil Stamp in midfield so he's got a great opportunity and for him to play with the likes of Juninho and everything is wonderful he's got to take things on his, on his own shoulders try and show what he can when he gets the chance Southgate's clearance Fox going to hold off York but couldn't keep it in play Middlesbrough were at their most effective earlier in the season when they weren't having to make too many changes. The only change that they made in their first 11 matches was the goalkeeper when Gary Walsh came in for Alan Miller. No ball from Johnson to Charles, looking for Milosevic, but didn't reach him. Charles getting away, but unable to provide the service that Milosevic had hoped for. It was a tremendous bit of movement. Tommy Johnson, that's, that's the wonderful thing, having the two wide full-backs. They've got three centre-backs, they can go forward whenever they wish. That was a tremendous run by Charles. I know it doesn't look the best of crosses, but surely one of those strikers has got to come to the near post. He's got York, he's got Milosevic. One of them should have been making that move to the near post. York to Johnson. Tommy Johnson. Too much lift on it. Still no 
serious alarm to the Middlesbrough goal. At this 30,000 seater Riverside Stadium. Gary Walsh, whose biggest setback yet so far was that after defeat against Everton. Five four goals to nil. against John Hendry. Well, it seemed to be a bit late, Rob. He's tremendous ball by Janino again. Hendry was up and uh, the lines were started running with him and then put his flag up. Certainly hasn't been the most popular decision. One that Hendry will no doubt debate. As far as the latest defeats revolved around controversy that hotly disputed penalty awarded against them at Nottingham Forest at the weekend Townsend bursting through Pearson trying to stay with him the clearance by Vickers Pearson's back under pressure and it's eventually played off Andy Townsend for the throw and Cox has had a difficult opening to the game he's made a few mistakes and then when he should have really cleared it I think he's really put Pearson in a lot of trouble down in the corner flag. He's very lucky to got a fair throw with a deflection off uh, Townsend. So Middlesbrough captain with the free kick. Pearson. Holding off Schirrecker, Henry waiting in the six-yard box. Looked for a moment as though he'd over-elaborated, but he's still got his cross in. Pollock unable to get there, though. This is Johnson. York for Villa. Draper and Johnson are steaming through the middle. Milosevic is there as well. It's good skill from York. Ehion coming forward in support. Now Charles. Villa with five players in the box. Charles can't find any of them. And you think after the other uh, quite poor cross, he'd have concentrated that little bit more. Good attack by Villa. Plenty of room for his cross. And it's so disappointing. Those forwards in there must be wondering what's happening. And the forwards can stay in there now for the corner. But it's first taken by Mark Draper. by Vickers Schimmicke lifted it forward but this time Milosevic is the player offside and he's had a quiet opening hasn't he Milosevic hasn't really had a kick just yet it's usually when you say things like that that they pop up with a goal straight away yeah, whose Villa career has been very much in fits and starts scored most of his goals away from home actually hasn't he he scored five league goals away from home and then he got that hat-trick and I think he could have had about seven in that game. Well, in fact, five of his goals this season have come in the two matches against Coventry. Savo Milosevic, who's come in for a bit of initial scepticism, but that hat-trick against Coventry has bought him some time. Here's Milosevic. He's got the shot in now. He did well to get away from Craig Liddle. You were wondering, you wonder, do you, when you say things like that? Shows a great player, close skill. Takes it here, turns him well. Looks as though he favours very much that left foot. Sends a screamer in. That'll do his confidence a world ago. Certainly the evidence of his performances so far tends to suggest that he converts the more difficult ones. And this is the ones presented to him on a plate. Powerful clearance by little Alan Wright. Oh. 
Southgate. That's Ehiog. Wilcox. Pearson. Looking for Janinho. He's past Ehiog. And Villa fortunate that Charles was covering. They might still come under pressure. The raiding run from Neil Cox. Headed away by Ehiog and Hendry, who made the powerful run initially. Was in an offside position when the next header came in. Again, with the, having the five across midfield, it gives them great opportunity. The likes of Cox and Fleming and, um, and the Villa's two wide fullbacks. It gives them great opportunity to get forward if they can keep the width. And they just got to make sure they concentrate when those crosses coming in. And it was a great run there by Cox coming into on, onto his left foot and then give it a tremendous cross. And Johnson has really put his team under pressure here, and he was fortunate that Bosnich was alert. Well, I'm not really sure that Moreno made the best effort to get to that ball. Now Moreno's away. Hendry's in the box, so too is Janino. Lined up instead for Jamie Pollock. It seemed to be sailing in, and it takes a deflection and goes behind for the corner. Again, a wonderful bit of skill. You wonder sometimes when these fellas are going to cross balls, but they have great belief in their own ability. I thought that was heading into the net. And the corner claimed by Mark Bosnich, but he could well have been a stranded man if that Pollock effort had remained on course. Pollock, who can pack a powerful punch from the edge of the area. But he's yet to score this season. Should I say, not after a few drinks, Rob. <laughs> Pollock packing a powerful punch. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to say on New Year's Day. <laughs> Charles with the cross. Milosevic looking to connect. Alan Wright. Oh, I say! scores his first goal for Aston Villa it's only his second ever goal and it was a rocket of a shot that puts Villa in the lead well here's the cross that you're talking about I know it's a great strike that is a teasing cross good control up for his left foot what a wonderful goal what a wonderful goal Anybody would have been proud of this, but for someone who scores as infrequently as Alan Wright, that is a cracking effort. Say First again. goal for Aston Villa. Magnificent strike. Well, I was very pleased after the four crosses that um, Charles had put in, in early on in the game. It was a magnificent cross. Walsh didn't know whether to come or stay, whatever. Milosevic didn't get on the end of it, and then a truly, truly wonderful strike. See if that draws the best from Middlesbrough and Janino to whom they'll be looking for inspiration. No chance for Henry! And it could so easily have been the equaliser, but Bosnich denied him. I was going to say it was a tremendous save, tremendous save. A little bit of a ricochet, Henry's onto it, and he's hit it across and just gets his fingertips to it. Fantastic save by Mark Bosnich, who punches this one clear. Fleming gives away the throw-in. Tremendous save, tremendous save. So early. But tremendous goal too for Villa here. Oh, it's a great angle for the goal, it's a great angle. You wonder whether he means to set that up. Look at the bend there. He only ever scored one goal previously. That was for Blackburn Rovers in a match against Ipswich. That was back in December 1991. So it shows how proud Alan Wright will be of that goal, a real collector's item for him. But Bosnich playing his part in maintaining Aston Villa's lead, and he's a, a player, Phil, I believe you had in your days at Liverpool. Yeah, when I was on the coaching staff at Liverpool, he came, I think he was only about 15, 16. And he came and he gave a truly wonderful 
display of goalkeeper for one so young. He was telling the other young boys at the club what they should be doing, the positions and everything. And he said, hey, this, this lad's something, something else. And we tried to organise for him to come over. But obviously, with the uh, contracts and everything, we couldn't get all of him to come from Australia. And I think Manchester United had similar problems when he was there. He certainly kept them in the game without tremendous save. Tommy Johnson. Walsh very quickly off his line. The argument now between Pollock and Stamp as they got in each other's way. Frustration creeping into the Middlesbrough crowd. Doesn't help anybody at all. So early on and with the team. Under strength of it as it is, doesn't do anybody any favours. It's a real problem for them if they feel they've hit the brick wall. Refereeing decisions going against them. Injury problems mounting. Villa leading, looking for a second. And Johnson had put it out so that Andy Townsend could get treatment and I think it was a, I think it was a tremendous ball from Tommy Johnson to one of the Villa subs actually. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being kind to him. I think he thought that Townsend had been uh, injured. But as it turned out, the injury wasn't as uh, serious as his teammates believed. I think it was Nigel Springs, actually, and he's, he's seen him there, and he just passed it to him, just knocked it. Janinho past Townsend. And no way past Hugo Ehiog. Johnson feeding right York. York tricks his way past Pearson. Good skills from York. And it comes back off Walsh. And right the way past Milosevic. Crowd of players just stood and looked at that one as it came back off the goalkeeper's chest. But that really could have been an awkward moment for Gary Walsh. I think he'd be pleased that it comes straight at him. York, who showed great skills in the build-up before unloading that shot. Draper. Looking for Milosevic. Cleared to Dwight York. And York just hesitated too long and allowed Middlesbrough to close him down. And from looking very shaky, Middlesbrough suddenly find themselves on the break. Two up against three defenders. And Moreno can't play it through. Townsend had tracked back well. But it was a tremendous strike before. See, Gary Walsh, it's rattled him right in the chest. Not the sort of thing you... Uh, Want to be coming at you at that sort of pace on a cold day in the northeast. Milosevic. They've been squeezed up at Villa, but Milosevic is really bearing down on them now. And not for the first time in his career. It's the finish that lets Savo Milosevic down. I think Gary Charles was very disappointed as well. He was streaming down the right hand side here. He could have just been slotted in. But earlier, Dwight York had really given Gary Walsh a test. Well, I think he's, he's very, very quick indeed. And I think he's seen Pearson. He's not the quickest defender. I don't know what quite <laughs> Gary Walsh was doing with that one, actually. They're lacking a lot of confidence at the moment, but they need something, a, a nice spark or something like that. Pearson's ball. Mark Bosnich coming to claim it. Tottenham the only team to win here in the league and it was uh, Newcastle-born player Chris Armstrong who scored their winning goal that day. Don't forget you'll be able to see Tottenham after this match on a double header against Manchester United. Neil Cox. Yeah. 
Fleming. And take on the return from Moreno. This is York. I think a combination of York and Milosevic, the pace of trouble, Middlesbrough, all evening. Charles getting it clear, but only as far as Stan, well in again from Southgate. Defended admirably in the opening half hour. Moreno. Pass Draper, just so with the help of Moreno. Henry stayed onside, but the pass is over hit for him. You wonder sometimes when Middlesbrough have got the ball and they're getting down towards the edge of the box. It seems as though they're frightened to put the ball in with having no height in there at all. It seems as though they're all wanting that extra touch, they're wanting to sort of play balls into feet all the time. Sometimes they've got to vary it and not even have to get to the byline to cross balls. It seems as though having no height whatsoever in that front line is is taking away the ability for two people to want to cross the ball early. It's up front where they've really been ravaged by injuries from the sparkling reviews that they were receiving at the start of the season. Only thanks to the form of Nick Barmby and Janaga Fjortoft. We're hoping, Borough, that Fjortoft will be back in action for the FA Cup tie at Notts County, but Barmby may have to go beyond that before he returns to the first team following his Achilles problem. Barnby has scored seven goals for Borough this season. Moreno looks to set up one here for Janino. And he clipped it intelligently, but it was just off the mark. Probably the best bit of movement from Butter. Moreno making a tremendous move. Just there. I thought there he was going to try a little back heel. Just seems to be falling flat when Butter get in that final third. Janino, who scored one goal for Middlesbrough this season, and looking at their starting eleven, they've got a total of seven goals between them. Which, as I mentioned, remember goes as many as Barnby on his own has scored for Borough. Flick on by Draper. Clearance by Gareth Southgate. It's not going to be easy for Middlesbrough to break down this notoriously mean Villa defence. Hugo Ethiog clears. And mind you that Villa have only let in 15 goals in the Premiership, which is the best defensive record in the top division. Henry beating off Charles. Moreno looking to get a shot on the turn, and he got it on the target. John Henry there doing what he's best now, backing into players, making it difficult for him. I remember going to look at him for Liverpool at, uh, at Bradford. A tremendous player. Reminded me a little bit, actually not as good as Kenny Daglish. He did the same thing. Very small and squat, backs into people, great control in and around the box. Henry going for goal this time! And Bosnich held on to it, but it was firmly struck by John Henry. I think that not, not only lift Henry, it lift the team, it lift the fans. Just getting in a shot like that. have been pussyfooting around up front nothing deliberate coming from anybody and he's gone and put in a tremendous shot Bosnich denying him again and Middlesbrough coming up against a very solid wall and even if they manage to crack their way through Schumacher, Southgate and Ehiog Bosnich is proving equal to the task at the moment the goal scorer not too often we can say that 
Like a bundle off the ball then, but still Middlesbrough couldn't use it to any great advantage. Pearson getting it out to Draper. The run has been made by Tommy Johnson, and he tried to place it. And his calculations were a little awry. Yeah, but he keeps linking up with those front two. Just feeding off. He's had a new lease of life playing in that position just off the front, lads. Might have thought his time was up a filler when Milosevic came and York. Always now coming through. Tremendous ability. Going to get you at least 15, 20 goals a year. Tommy Johnson might have thought he was on the way out. He's come in, slotted in there. What he does, he gives you that added goal power from midfield, which a lot of teams don't possess. And he's done really well. He won't mind having a 10 shots a game if he can maybe get one. formation employed by Villa with three players with attacking instincts in Milosevic and York and Johnston playing just behind them Middlesbrough are trying to respond Janino staying well forward with Moreno and John Hendry well I think with the personnel what Villa possess the three centre-backs could play as Southgate dominating everything at the back telling people where to go and two full-backs who are attack-minded and that's what you need in this formation the full-backs have to be full-backs to start with not wingers who are good in those positions you need full-backs who are good attacking and Charles and Wright are in that mode Wright having further added to his contribution to this particular match by scoring the goal that separates the two teams Because I don't know how we'll do for at the moment. Shimmaker. Layoff from York is a neat one to Tommy Johnson. He loves that area, the boy, doesn't he? Loves coming in, waits for that ball to get popped in there and then just sees it and playing off the pair of them. And still him, like Juninho, is not getting picked up in that withdrawn role. Well, this match is the first part of a double header for you. Our second feature from the FA Carling Premiership is Tottenham against Manchester United. So make a note to stay with us for that from White Hart Lane. Tottenham against Manchester United coming up after our coverage from the Riverside Stadium. Villa are leading with Alan Wright's goal and here he is again Townsend who settled the last meeting between these sides which was in the League Cup last season Draper positive run from Draper ended off well by Pearson in the end Wright gamely holding off Janinho to find Andy Townsend four against five foot five when Alan Wright meets Janinho and Milosevic is offside but Janinho may well be feeling the strain of that last little clash with Alan Wright a lot of questions about him when he came here focused around whether he would settle to the hurly burly of English football it's your first live sighting of him Phil what have you made of him I think he's great, it's difficult uh, with so many injuries to this day uh, in the Middlesbrough side. He's got unquestionable, his skill is magnificent. Just feel as though he needs a few people running off him. Farmy gives him that little bit. And I think Shortoft as well can hold the ball up for him. And he does play, he's not playing today. You've seen Zanini on a different light. But he's looking at him in the Umbro Cup before he came in. He was wonderful. Not too many of us have heard of him at that time but him and a said play Roberto Carlos playing on the left side magnificent players and the whole Brazil team were brilliant but Janinho came and he was oh he was like a bright light tremendous play and it was nice to see him go and come to this country and Robbo deserves a pat on the back for doing it maybe the first time that Janinho has faced Villa but uh, a good player at home Villa Park during that Umbro Cup tournament Here's 
the occasion when Brazil beat Sweden. Waiting to profit. Great control from Tommy Johnson. What a fine goal that is. Great skill from Johnson. And Gary Walsh beaten by a fierce shot that followed some beautiful control from the Villa striker. If we've got time, that must have been about 20, 25 passes. Tremendous. That is wonderful, wonderful control. And that deserved the goal. That certainly deserved the goal. We've just talked about Tommy Johnson before and how many shots he'll have looking for that one goal and that just could be it. But a tremendous bit of skill. He's not even looked up there. He knows where he is. He's scored enough goals and he's popped out right into the far side. Shattering blow for Middlesbrough to lose a second goal so close to half-time. Johnson, who scored in Villa's last away win at Southampton. Now hoping that he's secured another win, but Middlesbrough won't give up that easily. It's difficult to see how Middlesbrough and where Middlesbrough are going to respond. They have got Andrew who can create things, Janino with his little flicks and everything just outside of the box. But I, don't, I haven't seen anything as yet to worry the Villa back three. Brian Little will be reasonably happy with the way things are going. Janino. Wright is there ahead of Neil Cox. Cox, if anyone, has a perfect incentive to try and turn this match around, but it's one-way traffic at the moment, and this is Draper for Villa. York. Johnson wants it again, there's a gap for him, and he almost exploited it. They're standing off Tommy Johnson, they've already paid the penalty once. There he is again, he doesn't mind left foot or right foot. He certainly packs a lot of power as well in his shots. I say talking before, if you want to have ambitions to win the Premiership, you need players to score from all different positions, and this is what Aston Villa do have. They've got the lads up front who can do score the goals. Tommy Johnson there, Draper. They like the least. They should be qualified for Europe this season. The period of inactivity saw them drop behind a little. They slipped down to eighth place. Victory will lift them up to fourth, at least temporarily, with Tottenham playing later. Match against Manchester United. Beautifully live here on Sky Sports. Alan White. York and Milosevic were both waiting for it. They can wait a little longer in there because Pearson has given the corner. This is Alan Wright. Draper whips it in. Clearance was by Vickers to Townsend. This is Wright. Villa started the build-up to the goal very patiently, just knocking the ball around inside their own half. It was Wright's sudden positive surge that led to the opening. Fox trying to hold up York. The mountainous task and York is past him. He can't deliver the goods for Milosevic as Vickers gets in the way. Again, York's got so much. His control's exceptional. His pace. It's like lightning. And it caused all sorts of problems. It was his only, only his final ball which let him down on that occasion. Johnson then won the tackle, but uh, 
Milford straight offside. But in desperate need of a goal, aren't they? If they can just before half time. Caninho looking to lay one in for Moreno. It's Henry shot. And it's a corner. Again, there, there, there's those little balls in there. I think it was Southgate again with a tremendous tackle. Janinho's corner was a difficult one. And it was Moreno who came in. I think he caught surprised by a, a better ball from Janinho there. I think it was just the presence of Jamaica which put him off. corner from Janinho that really caused Bosnich the anguish and it was York's header away that relieved the danger but Villa will be quite happy with the way things stand as Martin Bodman brings the first half to a close a rare goal for Alan Wright but a cracker to put Villa ahead and a fine goal too after a string of passes for Tommy Johnson who showed great control and a beautifully executed finish to make the half-time score at the Riverside Stadium, Middlesbrough nil, Aston Villa 2. It's the Riverside Stadium first up for us tonight, where Villa are leading by two goals to nil. They're not particularly enjoying it, those Middlesbrough fans. Manchester United have arrived at White Hart Lane. That's coming up next, live. Tottenham against Manchester United. Andy Cole, three and three. There's William Prinier, the new darling of Old Trafford. Incidentally, if you're watching our first match in the pubs and the clubs around White Hart Lane, message from the police, please don't delay your arrival at the lane. That will lead to congestion and possibly a delayed kickoff. So, although we'll be sorry to lose you, You'd maybe best make your way to White Hart Lane now. First up live, of course, it's the Riverside Stadium. Middlesbrough against Aston Villa. Two goals to nil to Villa at half-time. 11 attempts, three on target. Nine from Borough, four on target. Unusually, but happily, we haven't seen a booking yet. Seven fouls, five offside decisions. What about the possession? 55% to Villa. Well, it's been a smashing game so far, Andy, hasn't it? And um, no doubt that Villa deserved to be in the box seat. Oh, I think so. It took a little while, the game, I thought, to kick, kind of kick off. But once it did, uh, all through this goal from Alan Wright, and, well, what a way to get your first goal for your club. And he sets it up beautifully. People at home might think maybe he miscontrolled it, but no way. He has a look at this. He tees it up for the volley. He wants to volley it, so he knocks it up in the air. And I tell you, he'll play for another 10 years and he won't hit one as sweetly as that. <laughs> Do you think that was so? a wonderful strike. I mean, how good was it? This is how good it was. I've taken the reverse angle of this goal because I just wanted to show the viewers at home the bend on it, how mm. much bend they actually got in it. But it was down to the system as well, Richard, how they get this in. I've often talked about two fullbacks can go on the attack. Well, Gary Charles crossing it. It doesn't matter, though. It, stills allow, it still allows this man to come in on the edge of the box. But just watch the bend on this. I mean, I could quite... Up it goes. Now... Can he score? Now you watch this. It's going wide. Oh no, it's not. Oh, it's a great <laughs> goal, isn't it? <laughs> and that was absolutely glorious. And Tommy Johnson, who Phil Thompson had mentioned once or twice, always prepared to have a go. He eventually got his reward as well, didn't he? Yes, he did. And that was a great finish as well. They've had trouble, Middlesbrough. They've been a little bit outnumbered in midfield. They've got Pollock and Stamp in there, Richard. And they've not quite caught with Draper, Johnson and Townsend. And Tommy Johnson's just drifted in the, and he's threatened. But it was interesting to hear Tom will talk about that goal. He said, I think that, he said, he thought that was a 20th pass. He wasn't quite right. You know what Tom was arithmetic, right? It's not the best. <laughs> but just his count was close. So I've taken this goal right back to where it began, and I'm just going to let it run naturally. Here we go. Dwight York picked up. Viewers at home can count the passes. I've already done that. I am. Oh, good God. You can count them then. But they're so patient in the build-up. And they, they get, look, at, look at Johnson. He just stands around here. Look, that's the eventual goal scorer. They're not quite sure the two in midfield who to pick up. They've now got Draper free up here if they want to go there. 
you know, they're really struggling to come to terms. I think with the fact that Juninho is not really a midfield player, it's allowing Villa to get three against two in there. Again, look, at here's a potential goal scorer. Look at his position. He's just sitting about there, not interested. He's still keeping count. I'm ten, I can't talk. Good lad. Ten. Here he is. Now Johnson starts to go. Now he's starting to make his move this way. There he goes. And the next time we see him, there he goes. Look at that. He starts to make his run into the box. How many passes? 14. 15 coming up. 16. And what a finish. Cross the goalkeeper. Go on. And a beautiful strike. So what? 16, 17 passes. Great goal. And Middlesbrough with all sorts of problems. Trailing by two goals to nil at the Riverside Stadium. Live later, of course, it's White Hart Lane. Tottenham against Manchester United. But when we come back, what about a Middlesbrough revival? What can they do about this? They trail 2-0 to Aston Villa. We're live at the Riverside when we come back. So it's back to the Riverside Stadium. Let's rejoin our match commentators, Phil Thompson and Rob Hawthorne. The last league meeting of these two sides ended with a 5-1 victory for Aston Villa and already two up at half-time. Rakeem, that such an embarrassment is not repeated. Villa will get the second half underway. Hey, Phil, I think they could have allowed you a margin of error of three I'll on tell the you passes what, I thought it was said, it's Christmas, New Year, chaps. You've got to be generous. It was a bit of a breakdown there. But well, it was. It was lovely to watch, sitting up here and watching it um, unfold right before your eyes. Tremendous. And you like seeing them keep the ball, the movement, and then a great ball in from Townsend. A magnificent goal. Well, then getting us restarted. Alan White. Tommy Johnson, their scorers. Middlesbrough have already suffered one second City disappointment within the last few weeks. Birmingham knocked them out of the Coca-Cola Cup. Got a goalless draw here and then beat them 2-0 at St Andrews. Savo Milosevic unable to extend their embarrassment on this particular occasion because he strayed into an offside position. by right straight to Cox Cox who has as good an incentive as anyone to turn the situation around as a player sold by Villa for what at the time was a club record paid by Borough a million pounds and things have moved on since then you feel as though Borough have got to throw caution to the wind a little bit if they want to get something back into the back into the game got to get people forward but then they've got to be careful at the back little has given the ball away Johnson's combined well this is Milosevic and came back a little awkwardly off for Gary Walsh from Milosevic's firmly struck shot but Craig Little really inviting Villa onto the Middlesbrough defence with the ball that he gave away to Johnson so it's difficult those long balls from the back there's no height at all up front for Middlesbrough. They keep knocking those balls up and Southgate and his co-defenders are having a wonderful time winning every ball in the air. So they've got to be a little bit more delicate, try and bring people into play in midfield. And even when they do play the ball long, it's try and just drift the balls in to the chest and the thighs of the fellas up front because they can make it difficult to get the right service. Resisting Southgate's challenge to Moreno. Hands end in the way. Now Schumacher has to show how much he's matured. He gets it away well. Hendry. I think they've got to get more balls, especially when they get into that final third. They've got to get more balls into the John Henry's feet. And even the likes of uh, Moreno, they've got to try and keep him inside the box. He does possess great close control. To make it difficult for him, he's got to stay in the box. Middlesbrough might have looked at the Villa team sheet 
before the match and felt that with Paul McGrath's absence, it was as good a chance of any of winning with a weakened team. But so far, Schimmacher's performance has belied his youth. Southgate's done well too. Tommy Johnson, and leave it behind for Milosevic. Start bursting clear. Tackling back against Janino and winning the throw. Probably with the formation he now playing, Tommy Johnson's role in the midfield, getting forward all the time. He's is restricted a little bit more. Him and Towns enough to sit in the middle to give that good anchor in the centre of the pitch, and he does it very, very well. But he he must find it very difficult because he has looks to get forward, possesses a great shot. So of course, he's not going to get as many goals as he would like. Moreno. Short. Yes. Moreno. Stamp. Oh. Well, he has yet to put his stamp on this match, but he's made a positive start to the second half. It was a little, well, it was a lot better from Middlesbrough. Getting the ball into feet, which they need to do. Not winning the ball in the air. Not a bad shot, but I think uh, Bosnitz had it covered all the way. And we grab it out. And fouling Tommy Johnson. Drake has made a good run forward. Alan Wright. Clearance by Vickers. how Middlesbrough wish they had a Brian Robson out there at the moment to be able to really take the game by the scruff of the neck throw a few real good tackles about Milosevic worlds away from goal from Sabo Milosevic but Brian Robson has tried to lose the playing side of his player manager's role he's been forced to play himself on occasions this season but he's been troubled by a little bit of sciatica lately Somebody said to me, celebrating his 300th injury with a game. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lad, Robert. Good lad. Well, speaks a former international teammate. I shouldn't say anything of the injuries that I had, believe me. <laughs> Draper shrugging off Cox. He did well to recover. Just though he got in there, didn't it? Just though he was in, Cox made a good tackle in the end. They don't seem as happy with the formation as Villar are with theirs. Townsend with a corner. There's Draper. Charles. Right. Milosevic. 
think Fleming might have been playing him on on the far side. But again, the linesman was very, very late with his flag. Just can't see over the far side, but I know Fleming was just... He was wandering out about five yards behind the rest of his defence. so far has held everything thrown at him again he does possess great touch shows the dummy there he tries a little bender into the far corner just didn't have that power to take it past Bosnich Charles forcing it through to Milosevic and Charles has continued his run Is threatening when Middlesbrough are keeping the ball and passing. They don't look as threatening as when Villa are in full flight. When they're going forward, you always feel as though when they're keeping that ball, that final ball, there's going to be somebody on the end of it. Dwight York or Tommy Johnson. Charles. York this time after Charles I tried to sweep it through to them. It wasn't the best of clearances by Gary Walsh. This match coming slap bang in the middle of a Midlands treble for Middlesbrough. Forest in their last game, Villa in this, and then the trip to Notts County in the FA Cup. Things stay as they are at the moment. It's not the best frame of mind in which they'll be approaching one of their main hopes for silverware this season. Particularly now that the Coca-Cola Cup is all over for them. Good challenge that from Schimmerker. Done well by Draper. Johnson finding Dwight York. Certainly what play you don't want running at you, and it is in tremendous form is Tommy Johnson. He gets that ball, he comes running at you, causes all sorts of problems. Here's Hendry looking to supply Moreno. And he just delayed it too long, and Ehion comes clear. Again, as you're just saying, it just don't look that threatening, but when they are going forward. That was a quite a decent chance for Moreno, and he should have made more of it. This is Milosevic, he's trying to go it alone. Too close to the goalkeeper with the shots. Middlesbrough fans trying to turn their frustration at that last missed opportunity into encouragement. But it's been a testing New Year's Day for them so far. Fjort often without Barnby, they've lacked the potency for which they were noted earlier in the season. 
what you're talking gives them that extra height up front if they are in trouble ball from the back of five play backs in makes it so difficult for defenders it gives them that extra option Hendry's waiting in the box if Fleming can supply and it's a wasted cross again and that will only serve to increase massively the frustration of the home fans spending power and the greater potential here at the Riverside Stadium has also increased the level of expectancy Draper looking to connect with this and although previously Middlesbrough have been a very durable and resilient side at home start turning against them life could become very difficult this is Hendry trying to hold off Schimmicka and Hendry's touch was the last one good pick good defender by Schimmicka realized that Hendry was going nowhere just was leaning into him he just made a great tackle about a couple of minutes ago on Juninho on this flank it set up a good attack you were saying before, Middlesbrough may be looking at Filler and saying McGrath's not playing, good chance to take advantage. But I'm quite sure that Filler have said the same about Middlesbrough and all their injury problems. Nice time to play them. Well, let's try and get something out of it. Brian Robson's patience with the way things are going may be wearing thin. Substitution could be imminent. Here's Cox. Converged upon by Johnson and Andy Townsend. I don't think he liked that Tommy Johnson, did he? <laughs> I think Townsend tried to read it. Moreno. Hendrick. He's got it across well. Janino never really caught it cleanly. That's a tremendous ball. John Henry going there. He's not had to get to the byline. Just cut it back. And when as Tommy Johnson was alive and alert for his goal, I think it's called Janino. Just a little bit on the rest. This is Bellis for Villa. There for Middlesbrough. Trying to keep up wave after wave of attack. This one breaks down now. Milosevic was badly hurt there. Here's York. Milosevic still hasn't got up. Right. Townsend. And he's just back on his feet and showing no ill effects of Milosevic. What an amazing recovery that was. And then he takes another tumble against Neil Cox. It's amazing what a nice injury does to you, doesn't it? <laughs> Does not pep you up. His unpopularity is clear here now. Middlesbrough being urged forward. Nice little layoff. Moreno trying to get into possession. tumble in the box but never any suggestion that there should be a penalty award this is York Milosevic ahead of him trying to stay on side that's where they do look the most dangerous is when they're getting those little one twos in and around the box it's just that lack of firepower at the end of it now the control of Milosevic lets him down the sort of touch he didn't want when so much public opinion is against him at the moment for what was uh, deemed to be an exaggeration of an injury and he all in well now the 
play from Charles that Middlesbrough can't capitalise upon. And Jamie Pollock was the man who challenged Savo Milosevic. I think the two of them are down to ground early, both of them. The change is being made now by Middlesbrough at last, and Curtis Fleming is coming off. And on in his place comes young Alan Moore, the 21-year-old Irishman, who played from the start in the last match against Nottingham Forest. But Fleming, who gave away the hotly disputed penalty in that match, appears to have suffered something of a dip in confidence as a result. And he's not been the most popular player with his own supporters here this evening. Middlesbrough are going to score, they need to do it now. They've got the fans onto the side. Playing a little bit better. You feel as though this is the time they've got to score. Where it's going to come from, I do not know. <laughs> Henry looks about the most likely. Henry's waiting now at the edge of the penalty area. Of his progress. Fininho. Clearance by Ejio. Testing the resolve of Villa, this Middlesbrough spell. More with a throw. Too easy for Mark Bosnich with Burroughs' predicament as it is. You think in positions like that, Cox would get into the box more often, going on at the size of him to Alan Wright, is to get in there and make, make more problems for him. But you've yet to see him make the most of his heading ability, Cox, because he can't score goals. He's already got a couple to his name this season. Moving a header in a recent home match with West Ham. Draper is offside. It's quite a turnaround, really, in Villa's fortunes this season. They were 20th in the league at this stage of the last campaign. Yeah, here they are having fallen off the pace, but only because they have matches in hand. And Brian Littleton, an absolute wonderful job, hasn't he? Taking over when things were really poor for Villa. Brought some good players in, got a good formation going, which suits his team. It's a very bold formation as well. Yeah, people, people think it's a defensive formation, five at the back, as they say. I think it's more... You take chances, you've got the right players to play it. You have two attacking fullbacks, you have like having five in midfield. Nino's tackle, that's too short for more. Moreno. A little short. Draper. Vastly uh, overhit for Gary Charles. That uh, was a good, a great idea. Gary Charles is already in full flight as the ball was going to Draper, and it's just wasn't a good pass in the end, but the possibilities were there. Kendrick. Tackling back from Alan Wright. Dice 
facing with danger. But Janino can't make them pay with a telling cross. Villa never had that under control at all. Everybody leaving it for one another. But Janino's pass should have been better. Marino was free on his own in the middle of the goal. And in the middle of the pitch. Awkward corner for Bosnich to take. He showed great strength and purpose to claim it at the second attempt. I think the arms caught him right across the head. It's done yeah. well to get, get it at the second attempt. Nigel Pearson was the challenging player. And uh, Bosnich, having taken the free kick, now sees that he's been urged not to do so because John Hendry is coming off to make way for the introduction of Clayton Blackmore. Well, I think it must be an injury to him because he's he's been well he's played very well up front. He's got hold of the ball up there. He looks the one more likely to score. So it must be an injury of some sort that he's gone off John Henry. First touch from Clayton Blackmore who apparently has come on to replace Henry who's suffering from a groin injury. So another reshuffle, and Janino, who played up front against Nottingham Forest, goes forward to partner Moreno. More tucks in in the midfield, and Villa are offside at York. Lack of concentration out the front two of, uh, of Villa in the last ten minutes or so, getting caught regular offside when they've been in some great positions. And Middlesbrough have given the ball away to Tommy Johnson, scorer of Villa's second goal. This is Milosevic, instantly looking for Dwight York. Milosevic has stayed in the area. Draper's cross cleared by Vickers. Now Blackmore. Break from Moore. Moreno, Janino is ahead, calling for it. This is Stamp. Took it on a little too far with his first touch, and that allowed Shemaker to cover. A young lad, he's read the situation well, Shemaker. Squandered in there at the right time, and it was looking quite prosperous for uh, Middlesbrough. Lovely touch from York to Milosevic, but now York needs to get himself in the middle. Milosevic has shown too much of it, but still York comes in, and the rebound isn't gobbled up. At one time, I think he might have had a share tugged to what you seem to be in there, and he just seemed to get caught in his tracks. Now at the other end, Schumacher having to do some more defending against Janino's run. I think Pearson thinks he's done, he's done everything there, and he just left it. Just a little tug, I think. From Alan knocked Moore, him out of his, yeah, knocked him out of his stride. looking for Dwight York. This is Ehiog. And York tackled for the corner. Again, it's a great position. Don't forget that for your man of the match, you can give us a call now, 0891 111101. That's 0891 111101 to nominate your Carling Premiership man of the match. Say Dwight York when he got that ball, he's running at people in the box, causes all sorts of problems and stays in the box with the ball. Schumacher's header and York is in there again. I mean, the shove there on Little is penalised. Well, I thought that was shoulder to shoulder. I think Dwight York's done really well. And Middlesbrough are back to make yet another change. Their last substitution brings off their captain, Nigel Pearson, and sees the introduction 
of Phil Whelan, the former Ipswich man. Seems to be a bit bemused by the decision, does Pearson. I think he might have got an injury just before when he made one of his tackles. Here's Wright. It's a knee injury that's forced the early withdrawal of Nigel Pearson. Alan Wright Here's Cox Moreno Janino Pollock advancing Shying away from the shots And Ethiog Clears the cross. Moore held off by Gary Charles. And the clearance by Charles. And Middlesbrough have been doing their level best to find a way back into this match, but for all the possession, the Villa wall is still proving impenetrable. Cox going for it said Phil you'd like to see him making more of a challenge in the air and it was Shimakari was up against that time and he couldn't reach it yeah you feel as though he needs to get in there especially the predicament what they're in need a goal desperately I think if anything he should throw caution to the wind he could win a few aerial balls especially in this last 15 minutes now push forward and have a go and just maybe let Blackmore sit a little bit more on this right side They might entice a few more crosses from the Middlesbrough players. Middlesbrough at the moment playing without a, a visible on-field leader. Nigel Pearson didn't hand on the captain's armband after his withdrawal. Here's Vickers. And the respite from Milosevic's pressure is only temporary. As Villa have now won a corner. Only test for Whelan since his introduction. Draper. Try for the near post. And it had Walsh sprawling. Southgate. Now could he be caught out of position? Stamp goes through. Good cover from Schimmerker. Cox. It's persistence from Neil Cox. And it was a tepid finish after a good run. Yeah, he's, he's done well. He's, he doesn't seem to have performed as well in his defensive duties. But I think getting forward, he can cause problems. But at the other, other end, Middlesbrough were caught sleeping from the corner. He's had a clear shot at goal as Mark Draper. Whelan. on York Janino and great a late flurry of excitement I don't think you're really sort of too worried Janino tremendous ability doesn't seem to pack a powerful shot it's nice when he's moving and he can get the bend the ball into the corner of the net but he doesn't seem to have the power when he's sort of 25, 30 yards away from goal. I think uh, Bosnick will be very pleased. 
couldn't find the sort of bend that Alan Wright did, as we saw so visibly in the first half with the goal that put Villa ahead. It really was some strike, wasn't it, that Phil? Wonderful, wonderful. I think even if he had got beat today, he'd be so pleased about that goal. Funny players dream about those things. There's more. And Blackmore with the shots. Blocked by Schimmaker. Came off Jeremy Pollock last. And the opening had fallen to Clayton Blackmore. York. Here's Milosevic. Cox. Too easy for Draper and Wright. Now York. Alan Wright. Villa again building in the sort of area from which they eventually launched their attack for the second goal from Johnson. As 17 passes this time as Ehiog's ball goes straight to number 17, Clayton Blackman. Cox. Janino away from Johnson well, goes to past him as if he wasn't there. Usually wasteful from Southgate. Clayton Blackmore. Raising a few spirits. Yeah, we've seen him hit a few like that, haven't we? At uh, Manchester United, always likely to hit one from 25, 30 yards. Not today. Don't forget to get your calls in for our man of the match. It's 0891 111101. 0891 111101. And you can give us a call now. Don't forget plenty more live football to come with Tottenham against Manchester United following this match. Jamie Pollock, good opening for him, took it on too far. It was a real sight of goal there for Pollock, and we saw in the first half how he can hit them. But fatal hesitation there. It was just a, just a little second, split second, and he's lost it. It's worth taking a pot shot as well, just flinging your left foot at him, something like that. And just a bit of lack of confidence in him. Back to Moreno by Blackmore. Janino. Janino going for the return. But again, they over elaborate at the vital moment. Here's Jamie Pollock. Does drive it in this time. It was more difficult, more distant, and off the mark. So it does seem to be over elaboration between Janino and Marino there. Good shot, got it covered all the way. He had a good chance at the moment before that. It's gone again. Villa just seemed to have happy to settle, I think, for the 2 0 victory. Seemed to took the foot off the pedal, don't they? I always feel as though they got that little bit extra if they want to step the game up. If they did lose a goal or something. I wonder just how much they've benefited from coming into this game feeling so fresh without the usual arduous Christmas programme having Avoided involuntarily, of course, two fixtures brought about by the postponements of their home matches against Liverpool and against Sheffield Wednesday. 
Even the training has been a little difficult for them because of the surface at Bodymore Heath. So much of that build-up has been done on AstroTurf, which is always a surface I think that managers are a little more reluctant to use in conditions like this because it brings out all the aches and pains. Especially when you get a bit older as well. I wouldn't know I about that. I, I don't think Paul McGrath would be doing too much training on that pitch. Does he on any pitch? Moreno trying to place the shots, but not for the first time. Disappointment for Borough and their home fans. The final don't, forget, the don't forget this is the first part of a double header for you on Sky Sports today. Tottenham Hotspur against Manchester United coming up from White Hart Lane. That should be a real cracker. Second against fourth, although Tottenham may be temporarily displaced from fourth position. As Villa look to hold on to that 2 0 lead here. I'll tell you what, you go a long way to see two final goals, even in that game later on this evening, and the two that we've had here tonight. Played forward by Wright, this is Milosevic. Tommy Johnson had turned up in the box, but it was overhit for him. Here's Shimika. Dwight York. <laughs> Some late glory still in this. Good save again from Bosnich after Janino's run. Great touch, great, great awareness well, when he's been called upon. But Bodnis is been in fine form. Bosnic turning for some acknowledgement from the travelling support after his latest safe catch. Restful Christmas for Brian Little, but he may well wonder just how much stronger Villa's position would have been. Had they been able to play those games against Liverpool and Sheffield Wednesday? Certainly if they could have reproduced in those two games, the sort of form that they've shown here. They might be in an altogether healthier league standing. Tommy Johnson having scored the second goal. And to Alan Wright. I still think they'll be more than pleased with the results. It keeps them well in contention with the Premiership title. Cox. Just goes to show what a great job Brian Little has done there. Free kick given to Villa. But all the talk, really, from Neil Cox is to the linesman. I don't think he's wishing him a happy new year. I think it's a foul. It's, I think it's frustration coming out in Cox there. predictions for the championship have rested around Manchester United and Newcastle but Spurs are hoping to show there's a threat from London and Villa hoping to put Birmingham back on the map outside that was a couple of clubs just that lying just behind Manchester United and Newcastle who would love to have something to say in the title Tottenham then we've got Villa Liverpool Offside there. Two minutes of the match to go, so time running out for you with regard to man of the match. Get the calls in now. 0891 double one double one oh one. That's 0891 double one double one oh one.
through, just lacked in each department. Villa looked a stronger at the back in midfield with the forward runner near Johnson. And the two lads up front always look as though they're going to produce something. But as besides Juninho, that's been lacking in the Middlesbrough game. Schimmerka. He can be pleased with his contribution, Schimmerka. He came in for McGrath and they've not looked as though they've missed him. Such an experienced player, but he's came in. It's always nice to have players like that who are able to come in, slot in, and it doesn't change the team one bit. For so many of these teams who play three centre-backs, they don't seem to have anybody who's able to come in, slot in, when people do get injured. It's nice to have such a young boy with great promise. Always rewarding for the coaching staff on the youth side of any club. To see someone nurtured, blooming in the first team. Here's Draper. say it's been a very easy game to referee hasn't it he's done well I think we've had very few fouls no bookings no bookings I don't think Brian Robson will be too happy about that <laughs> <laughs> Pollock popular clamour might have been for Pollock to be booked after the challenge on Milosevic Janino Here is Milosevic. Draper for Villa, who are gradually coasting to the security of their latest win. It'll be their fifth away win in the Premiership, matching Tottenham's record. Milosevic. Side. Alan Wright, who set up this victory with that fine opening goal, beautifully bent left foot shot, and it's a goal that set Villa off on the right track in 1996. Middlesbrough starting with a New Year hangover as Tommy Johnson completed Aston Villa's win, finishing off a move that contained 17 passes with some beautiful control and a well-executed finish. So Villa start 1996 in style, but depleted Middlesbrough will now be clamouring for the return after injury of Fjortoft and Barnby. It's finished at the Riverside Stadium. Middlesbrough nil, Aston Villa two. Thank you, Rob and Phil Thompson. 2-0 to Villa there then. When we come back, we'll have the Man of the Match announcement and, of course, coming up live very shortly, White Hart Lane, Spurs and Manchester United. Riverside Stadium, where, blimey, it's empty already. Uh, Aston Villa have just won by two goals to nil. Two first half goals were enough. 17 attempts, seven on target. 19 from Middlesbrough in a second half rally on target with 11, but they couldn't find a way through. Well done, Martin Bodner, eh, Andy? Kept it flowing, didn't he? Yeah, it was another good performance from the referee. Possession 50-50 in the end. Villa dominated it at the end of the first half. Barra had the better of it in the action areas. Second half, ball in play over 71 minutes. Tremendous amount from 91 and a half played. Now then, man of the match, where's your money, Andy? Let's have a look. Oh, all right. 17, right? My money's on the others. <laughs> it's, Alan Wright. it's Alan Wright with 24%. No, Incidentally, <laughs> it is the others, you're right, yeah. But it's Alan Wright. We're getting calls already for the man of the match at White Hart Lane tonight. Eric Cantona is leading the poll right now. Out of order. That's two first half goals then, and as Phil said in commentary, two better goals you'll go a long way to find. Smashing goals, both executed brilliantly, uh, but the build up totally different. The both full backs get involved, and as I've said, this is wonderful thinking, first of all, from Alan Wright to just lift it up and smash it in. And then Tommy Jaws' first touch here that gives him the time to steady himself 
And again, we talk about it, drill it across the goalkeeper, you've always got a chance of scoring. Now, we've got the best game of the day coming up in a moment or so, but uh, a little earlier at Anfield, Liverpool met Nottingham Forest, and again, three big points up for grabs here, Andy. Credentials were tested, for, in my opinion, at uh, Anfield today, Liverpool's, I mean, because Forest go two up very quickly through Steve Stone and then Ian Warren, two good goals, and uh, you wonder, would Liverpool come back? Would they have the strength? Would they have the resolve? Would they have the desire? And they had all of those things. No surprise to see Stone As we smash the land. Chip Stone drilled in the opener, eh? And this is a great goal again. Kevin Campbell's ball to Owen. It sets him 2 now up, so I think he can they come back? Can they do it? What's a big test now? Test. Isn't it? There's 18 minutes gone, and Liverpool are 2-0 down. Yeah, not even in, not even a quarter of the game. And there's not many teams go 2-0 up at Anfield within 20 minutes. And so you think Forrest are, are flying. But you always thought Collymore at some time in the game would get would show something. Fowler's playing well, and they combine together again. How often they did that against Arsenal recently. Collymore, the provider. And I think that's important, you know, to get back in a game when you're 2-0 down as quickly as possible, and Fowler does just that. Collymore providing, as you say, is that more what he's been looking to do, do you think? Fowler no, scoring the goal? No, I don't think so, Richard. I, I think that Stan Collymore wants to score goals, end the story. But he, he does take himself into positions where he, he creates particularly wide areas like that. I mean, that's a wonderful cross, but the marking, there must be some questions about the marking. But he still gets in again. Eh? Oh, it's seven, seven in four games. It's brilliant. And that's, to, go, to draw back level before half-time was very important for Liverpool. And then we wondered, you know, who's going to do it? Who's going to fashion something out? And it's a horrendous mistake by Mark Crossley. I mean, I don't know whether... His reputation, Stan Collymore's reputation, he knows all about him, Crossley. Whether it just makes you think a little, makes you... Did he need to be there? Well, I think he had every right to come, but he had every right to gather the ball. He didn't do that at all. And then it was Liverpool in the last five minutes who clinched it. Again, Collymore wide on the left. And Cooper can only knock it into his own. Colin Cooper can only knock it past Mark Crossley. And I think that was a big result for Liverpool. So that's a tremendous result for them. Third, Aston Villa up into fourth place on the back of their win today. Spurs down a place, that's where we're going next. Incidentally, all the results and the goals from the Premiership in the Sports Centre immediately after this programme. Right now, it's White Hart Lane, Tottenham and Manchester United, our commentators Trevor Francis and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. Happy New Year to you all from White Hart Lane. Milder weather than of late in the London area. Mistier weather too, but happily the fog has stayed away from the stadium. Let's bring you right up to date with the team news. Tottenham have a big playing staff, and at this hectic time of the season, it really...